Nelson, Neil Anderson. Yeah. Paul Anderson. Uchi. Yeah. Christensen. Yeah. Condon. DePietro. Furlong. Kinnan. Yeah. Lucy. Yeah. Nesta. Yeah. Spatafora. Yeah. Before we move to our first order of business, I just want to advise the council that uh, I have passed out a packet that was sent to me directly from the Northeast Regional Vocational High School. It is their budget, and I believe that the representative will be attending a budget meeting. I talked to Council, Council Lucy, so take a look at that budget if you have any questions. Again, there's a packet in front of you from the Northeast Regional Vocational High School. Thank you very much. <clears throat> We have an attendance tonight on the request of Council Bucci, member of, members of the May, Mayor's Housing Task Force, who are present to give us or provide a current update to the Council on the activities in the city. So, Council Bucci. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just actually have um, asked if we could have the Malden Housing Task Force come before the Council. About a year ago, Mr. Grosso, you came and gave us an overview of what was going on in terms of the property and how this really just blossomed into this um, request was that there had been a fire down at 21 Oliver Street, a um, series of different discussions with the residents, um, talking about other properties on their street. Um, I know that I am given, uh, we're all given um, information on a monthly basis regarding uh, the properties that are, um, are being um, monitored or evaluated or are in some form or manner under some type of um, program of the city watch. Um, but if you could just briefly tonight um, do a quick overview, uh, provide some information related to the, the amount of properties that you've dealt with from one year to another, because you've given us a pretty extensive packet of information that I've reviewed. Um, but I think in terms of just looking at where are we at, where are we going, and if I may, Council Bucci, uh, Mr. Grasso, can you please uh, state your name and address for the record? Thank you. My name is Ronald F. Grasso. I'm the director of the Mayor's Housing Task Force, and I work at the Redevelopment Authority. Uh, just to give you an overview, uh, to date, from January 1st to today, we have 113 active cases. Last year, we had, uh, we had performed services on 221 units. This year, we're, we're 113 already. Um, what this task force basically does, we're monitoring abandoned houses, the major problems that this city could face. Uh, in that packet, you'll see that uh, the city of Quincy, through an illegal unit, just had a fire, and people perished by it. We're eliminating this in Malden. We're trying to eliminate it. And I think the task force deserves a lot of credit um, by being on top of this situation. Um, we had approximately 75 um, bank-owned properties in Malden. That figure has come down to about 46. The banks know about Malden that we're not going to stand for these board-ups and, and properties in this condition. Uh, we have now um, been contacted by several larger cities in the Commonwealth. We are the model city for this task force. This was, uh, this was started in 1996. We have probably done in excess of 1,500 cases. Uh, some of the benefits to the city of Malden, uh, number one, would be if there's taxes or water liens owed on the property, the city comes first. They get paid. All these properties under receivership, which last year we had 17, this year already we have 11. They have to pay permit fees. The permit fees could run anywhere from several hundred dollars to several thousands of dollars. This all goes into the uh, general fund for the city of Marlin through permits. So it does a lot of good things, too. Um, we just, as you probably know, we just got, um, through the stimulus bill, we have four, four and a half million dollars of lead paint. We are incorporating this now into all these receiverships. So now we'll be taking care of another health and safety problem, lead paint. Uh, Chelsea just won in court Friday because with this lead paint you have to put a restriction on who can buy these houses. Uh, Chelsea won, so they set the... Uh, the record that we can do the same thing and we're going to pursue this. Um, uh, just to give you a quick breakdown of the, of the current cases, um, which you're probably interested in your wards. Ward 1 has 14 cases going on with the task force. Ward 2 has 7. Ward 3 has 14. 
uh, 4 has 10, 5 has 25, uh, 6 has 13, 7 has 19, and Ward 8 has 11. And that comes to 113 cases. Um, and through the efforts of our legal staff, which the two individuals are sitting to my right, uh, they do a heck of a job. Um, I've been in court, we're in court almost every day. Since the inception of this task force, we have not lost a case. We've been challenged many times, but we have not lost a case. That's a pretty good record. Mm -hmm. We have on the street approximately a million three hundred thousand. It will grow because the, the current cases we have are going to increase by several hundred thousand. So we'll probably have very shortly a million seven on the street. We have the 108 loan that everybody approved, which was excellent, was a million dollars. We have a Fannie Mae credit line of a million dollars. So we have a, a fund of about two million dollars. Now we're going to infuse this lead paint. So we're doing good things under the task force. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Council Bush, you still have the floor. Um, thank you. And I do want to recognize, you know, you do have a fabulous um, uh, legal team that I know I've had conversations with regarding pieces of parcels down in Linden. Um, both Barbara Durgan and Frank Russell are here tonight. I also want to recognize that there is a multi-departmental approach to the work that we do. Um, and, and, and yet, in those other departments, the yeoman work and have specific activities going on there as well. But tonight's discussion was really trying to get a real handle around your efforts. I know that there's a home down on Oliver Street that the signs went up that, you know, the MRA has it in receivership. And some of those folks didn't quite understand how did it go from one day being um, a house that was frequented with many, many people and many different problems um, to all of a sudden having the signs put up there. So, you know, in my seat, in my education of, of my in my role, I've learned how that process actually, there's a timeline of different things that have to happen in a certain methodical process for it to get to a court. Uh, to get to a court date to get receivership and then repair it and then it goes back to court and then at that point it, it potentially is could be owned by the city. Um, I know there's a lot of extensive monies that are going into these properties to bring these properties up to code and I think again feedback from the residents that I have talked to are most appreciative of this is a, 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 a particular uh, initiative that this city has embraced, will continue to embrace, um, can see that they're actually having productive outcomes, um, people are feeling better about the properties in their neighborhoods for, for some part, but again they don't know enough about it and that was the, the effort I wanted sure. to put forth tonight as well as I think it is something when you mentioned from January to now we have the um, figure of 115 as compared to last year's 12 month window that to me is a significant eye opener that there's a lot more happening we know with the market the way that it has in, in a sense gone in, in the tank in terms of the um, 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 real estate market that there, we're all hearing the news that there are going to be more properties um, coming online. So I think it's back to making sure that residents here, we are ensuring we're going to put forth our best efforts on, on their behalf for our neighborhoods. And that is the work I think you folks are actually doing. Um, so I don't have any other questions. The intention, like I said, wasn't to be, make this long and lengthy, but um, I do want to thank you for coming. Thank you for the information that you've um, certainly provided. And I certainly... Um, probably will have other questions. Mr. Grasso, you have offered to come down to the neighborhood meetings that I'm holding, meet with some of the residents who have some questions. Positively. Last night we had one, and this issue did in fact rise in part of our dialogue around what's going on in our neighborhood. So, and I extend that to any other council. If they have a, a meeting they want us to attend, we'd be mm -hmm. glad to come down. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Council Bucci. Thank you. And, and uh, Mr. Grasso, all my lights are lit up. So starting uh, from my right, and we'll work our way down, Council DePietro. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Ron, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you and uh, uh, the legal team for uh, uh, all the work you do here. Um, also, uh, in conjunction with the inspectional services, yeah, team, everybody working together, uh, we're trying to get a handle on this problem, which seems to be, as you say, is growing and growing. Uh, just recently in Quincy, uh, we all know that there was a tragic fire of an illegal apartment and uh, luckily, our firefighters uh, put out the, the fire in Ward 8, and uh, uh, we didn't run into that problem. But it's only a matter of time until we get the public support 
to call in uh, these illegal uh, apartments if they see them or uh, uh, different activities that might uh, 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 point our team, yourself and everybody else, in that direction so we can avoid any type of a, a tragedy uh, for, uh, uh, for the poor souls that are just trying to find something, but they're an illegal apartment that may not have proper egress or safety issues and stuff like that. So I'd like to thank you for the work you're doing. Uh, uh, keep it up, and also thank with you. the inspectional services and uh, Board of Health and everybody working together, and hopefully with the um, cooperation of the public, uh, we can get this under control before we have a tragedy. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Well said. Councilor Lucy. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Grasso, just a couple of questions. So a follow-up on Councilor Petro's thoughts on the public. Do you get a lot of um, anonymous tips? Or how, how do you find that, out how some of these That's basically how we get them. We also get them through the inspection of the service. They'll get them from not, you know, people working without permits and things like that. The fire department will have a fire. They'll go in and see that these, these violations exist. So it's basically all referrals through tips. Stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it isn't like you have a hot tip line or a hotline where they can call in secretly. It's just uh, they find out pretty quick that we, the, the residents in Malden are pretty smart. They know we have a task force, so they call. They usually call either myself or one of the attorneys or inspectional services, and they tip us off. Thank you. And, and uh, any idea when you say there's been fines collected? To any idea what the, those fines amount to? Yes. Yes. I I have them right here. The fines for the 15-month program, it's collected $153,000 in fines. The legal expense to run this program for those uh, 15 months, 194,017. There's a deficit of 40,499. Okay, that deficit, when you say legal fees, it's... So they pay the attorneys. They're in court almost every day on this. You, it's a lot of legal work to this program. That was going to be my. That could be. That could be, you know, like a sheriff's, a sh uh, constable, recordings. You know, recording fees at the uh, registry is one hundred seventy-five dollars now. So it doesn't mean that they got all this money. It's not their fees. It's it goes on their fee because they bill us for it because they have to pay somebody, you know, a constable or something like that. Now in court time. Um having not really spent a whole lot of time in court. I mean, you hear horror stories about, you know, uh, court, t court taking forever to get things uh, resolved. Is, is that the case in these situations? Not too much on the local level. Uh, one case where, that's in Washington now, the Department of Justice, is this rooming issue we had on Alpine Street. We're still fighting that. Uh, they just came back, and this will be an EMI case because... Um, this on Alpine Street, the, the Justice Department just asked us for a list of all the illegal units from the year 2003 to the current to show that we're not prejudiced against these individuals. And that has taken uh, a lot of time because we have to go back and research this. And Frank Russell has been going back and forth for how many months? Oh, probably a year over a year back and forth with the Department of Justice because this is a very important case that we do not want to lose. Uh, and if we win it, uh, like I said, this is going to be a, a case that everybody's going to refer to. And we have a very good chance of winning it because we, we're on the premise that these uh, <clears throat> so-called homes that offer these benefits to these people, these drug and alcoholic people with disabilities, we understand that they, they have these disabilities, but we don't understand why they're in a rooming house when a gentleman's collecting $135 per week for one room and giving nothing back to these individuals. It's basically a rooming house. Again, zoning. And that's what our premise has been on, and we think we have a good chance of winning this case. In other cities, they pay, they said the cities do the same thing with task force. They pretty much it's a it's out in the open now, kind of. I think in in uh, it's so important in neighborhoods. You know, you live in a neighborhood. The last thing you want is a you know something happening in your neighborhood like this, where it's an illegal house, or even worse, you know, something where it has way more residents than it's the neighborhood. You know, suggests that it can have. Positive. This individual that had this one rooming house on Alpine Street had owned three others. Uh, he's closed them down because he doesn't want to keep the fight up against us. It's hard to fight City Hall, but we feel we're 100% right and we're not going to stop. 
Uh, we hear now that this Alpine house uh, or structure, which probably some of you know, it's a beautiful home. At one time, he had 23 rumors in there. And the neighbors were upset because these people would come home late at night, go in the backyard, do different things, smoke, other things, and they were always calling the police. So now that neighborhood is settled down. They're happy. We hear that they're foreclosing on this property. So this, this gentleman got the, got the idea that we can't beat City Hall because we weren't put, you know, pulling back. And having been in that house probably 15 years ago yeah. when someone actually owned it, and it was a house, it was a beautiful, beautiful. house, yeah. you would have never known that that house even existed in Walden. And right. it's kind of a shame what happened, and I heard it was being foreclosed on Monday, too. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, I mean, the foreclosure is bad, but it's a good thing we're getting rid of it. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Christensen? Councilor Christensen. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, and thank you, uh, Ron, and to your team. Uh, you know how I feel about this program. I think it's one of the most important that we have. Uh, for the residents might be watching, just a one or two or three sentence description of what the Mayor's Housing Task Force is. The Mayor's, Mayor Housing Task Force, basically the Mayor started out when he ran for office back in 1996. We identified the ten worst structures in the city of Malden, and he created this task force. The task force is the end result of when, like, a building permit can't be uh, followed through, occupancy. We get the bad cases in the city. You have a great inspectional team here. You've got good department heads like Board of Health. If it's just an ordinary problem, it doesn't come to us. The, the department heads and inspectional services can handle that. We get the problems when someone doesn't pay attention. We get uh, boarded up homes, uh, people that tell the city, hey, go fly a kite. I'm not doing it. Those are the problems we get on the task force, and we go right to the end. Okay, thank you. And um, just on what I consider uh, to be, you know, an excellent document, it's been very helpful uh, to me and I think the rest of the body, just some quick rapid-fire answers, if you could, uh, on this document. I'm looking at that, sure. the Mayor's Housing Task Force list. If you could add, uh, maybe going forward, just at the top, uh, add, you know, as of what date this report is, that might be helpful to us. And then if you could order them by ward, you know, just to have all the ward ones up front. I don't know if there's a reason why they skip around, but if, okay. if we could so order them by sure. ward, that would be helpful. Positively. And then if there could be a couple of words on the ones that are deleted at the end of the report. I had a call today asking, you know, why such and such a house was deleted. I went to the report, you know, but there wasn't anything there. So maybe if we could go forward just to add a couple of things to Positive. let us know, let the council know why certain locations are being deleted. Uh, just a couple more questions, uh, Mr. Grasso. Task force meetings. I know we've talked in the past about having one at the evening for the council to attend quarterly. What would happen with that? I don't well, think that's being done. We had, uh, council, we had several meetings scheduled, and we did have them in the evening. We went about uh, I don't know, maybe six months with these evening meetings, once a month. Okay. Uh, but unfortunately... Uh, you councils are so busy, you never can. Uh, you, gotcha. I shouldn't say that. I, I stand corrected. Some of you did attend. Uh, but it wasn't worth us doing that because I have to hold the inspectional people and my people to come to these meetings. Okay. And, of course, they don't get paid. But I'm willing to go back to that one one meeting a month. If, if, if that's what you desire, we're there. Well, I was thinking yeah. maybe just quarterly, once a quarter. You know, but just something to take under advisement. Well, I, I think uh, the body's I changed. Sure. You know, that might be worth trying again. Sure. You know. I can talk to Sheila and we can set it up. She can give me an idea when you don't have the load, you know, your workload, because yeah. everybody's working double. Okay. We've got to do that. No problem. All right. And then another procedural. Could you get us a list of uh, updated sober houses in the city? I think the last report yeah. I show was 2006. Yes. So I think it was one page. Again, that was very helpful as well. I'll tell them. <laughs> this is our legal expert. Sure. No more. Gary, we don't, we don't recognize something as a, uh, a sober house. We, we've treated all of these as rooming houses. Can you please uh, just state your name and address for the record? Thank you. My name is Frank <laughs> Russell. Uh, I'm an attorney. I have offices at 15 Ferry Street. Um, and uh, uh, those uh, rooming house addresses, Counselor, are, are included in the uh, materials that you get biweekly. Okay, because I have a single-page paper that lists across the city, so... And that was distributed that, that to us. That may be very old, but uh, we... It is, we, 2006. Yeah, we don't maintain anything separate like that. Uh, it, 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 
is, is we're dealing with these all as, as rooming house issues. Okay. Um, Mr. Grasso, Mr. Russell, any changes you need by this body uh, to help the task force going forward at the moment? Uh, not really. I mean, I, I think it's working well. Um, you, it's great to have the mayor and the councils behind this program. It gives us the incentive. And like I said, uh, the mayor is, is trying to create a quality of life for the residents of Malden. And you people have come behind us. So we've always had the support of the councilors. And like I said, this is a team effort from the inspectional services right up to the, some of the bankers we use. So uh, if we keep going like this, uh, we, we will someday accomplish our mission. But it's, uh, it's a vast uh, undertaking, but we're doing well. And you can see that by not losing people in fires. And, and I know the fire department is very satisfied what we're doing. And like I said, uh, other cities are trying to emulate Marlin, Brockton, Revere. They're, they're all coming on. They're, they're trying to hire us as consultants to go out and talk to them, how to set these programs up. But the biggest thing you have in this program, everybody has to talk and cooperate. Other cities, they can't get the building department and their board of health together. They don't talk. Well, 12 years ago, we put this together, and we got all the departments working and talking. That's what makes this successful, because I couldn't be successful, frankly, without the team effort. And that's what we need. I just close up, Mr. President. Our greatest asset, obviously, I think, as one of the councilors to my right was mentioning, the citizens. Now, uh, when they do see something that looks off, uh, how are they contacting the task force? Is there an email? Is there a website? Is there a phone number? Some of them call the mayor. Uh, email the mayor. Okay. The, the city mall's website. Okay. They'll call me at 781 324 5720. Leave a message for me, and we call them all back. Okay. Or they contact uh, the attorneys. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Christensen. Councilor Anderson. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Ron, I have clearly first-hand experience with, uh, with the good work that, uh, that this task force has, has provided in, in uh, examples of, of two homes that were about 40 years old that were a major problem in the neighborhood um, beautiful, orig originally beautiful property that was just allowed over the years to, to uh, deteriorate uh, without the coordination of uh, this task force uh, it was hard to get the left hand to see what the right hand was doing uh, it was over, over $70,000 I think worth of work that was done in these two properties and uh, the work was completed the homeowner after kicking and screaming and, and resisting it for a long time uh, uh, was able to comply with what was directed by the housing task force it's been a major improvement in the neighborhood I think in the in the end uh, the the owners of the property are probably happier now that that the work was was done. It was forced on them. They wouldn't have done it by themselves, but it was forced on them, and it's really been an improvement. So I thank you and all of the members of the task force for that great work that you've done. Uh, it's clear that we've got a nationwide and worldwide economic problem uh, that obviously is having an effect on abandoned property. And I think you would... would, would if my numbers are right, you were saying about 200 or so, 213 foreclosures last year? No, uh, last year, no, we had 221 cases last year. Cases, okay. Year, but they weren't all foreclosures. Okay. okay, and already this year we're... 113. So you're, you're about, you're a quarter of the way into the year, and you've, almost, and you've got almost half as many... But through, the, through the cooperation of the different departments, exactly, we, we can solve this. Okay. By all means, keep up the good work. Thank you. Tell me about the responsiveness on the part of the banks. I, I would that would be a problem for us. You know, in the past, when when uh, in the case of foreclosure, you'd end up having the bank being the the owner and control of the piece of property, uh, and oftentimes we had, you must have had difficulty getting the banks to keep the property up and so forth. What's, what's your experience of, of late with that? Okay. When you see that we have a receivership, 
That is due to the bank not coming forward, answering Frank Russell's or Bob's yes. uh, letters to contact us, because we're not going to stand for abandoned property. Um, they're very slow. They're very slow. But under this program, we become what they call a superior lien holder. So You are number one in line. Number one. Yep. So if we have to go all the way to foreclosure, which we may be doing on April, I think April 28th, we had three foreclosures set. Mm -hmm. we, we won the case in court. The judge awarded us the money, but the bank is slow paying us. So I said, listen, I need this money back to recirculate it. So we scheduled foreclosure on three pieces of property come April 28th. Uh, the banks know about us now. There's a law firm out of Newton that handles most of these foreclosures. And... They're scared hell of us, which is good because we beat them in court every time. Frank and Bob are doing an unbelievable job. So they know the task force and what we can do uh, because we've taken homes from them. We've sold them at auction, and we put, uh, you know, owner-occupants back into these homes, which we want. And another thing under this lead paint portion we're going to start doing, we're going to start... These, these foreclosures are going to appeal to what they call moderate income people that are going to live in these homes. Mm -hmm. So we're getting rid of these investors. We have people in Brazil, people in Florida that could, they don't care. They walk away from the property. The bank gets it. We can't even get the bank to come in and talk to us. So we're not t standing for this. We go in and take it. Well, you know, I, I'm really echoing the comments that have been made uh, before me, but uh, let me do that and say that, uh, you know, uh, you and the team, the inspectional services, the attorneys that are working with you uh, are, are doing a very, very necessary job for us. Uh, we can see it in the neighborhoods, and, and we can see that, that uh, despite the economic downturn, not only statewide, countrywide, and worldwide, that uh, we can't afford to let housing in the city continue to, to be a... To, or allow the housing in the city to be a blight. And I think this housing task force is a, a big step in, in uh, stemming that tri tide. So please keep up the good work, and thank you very much to all of you. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Council Anderson. Council Gymnasta. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grasso, for coming. I'd like to say to everybody uh, from the task force to inspectional services of Board of Health in my short time here in the Council has been uh, extremely helpful to me. I was wondering if you, could, if you could help me, because we're on TV tonight, it just kind of walk through the process of uh, how a, uh, a house comes up. If I make a call to either you or inspectional services and get the ball rolling, one of the frustrations I hear from residents of Ward 4 is that it takes a long time. Maybe you could help explain to the residents of the process of how long it takes to get you know certain things done, and then to you, and then you know the court process obviously takes time. I'm thinking of a situation like on Wedgemere, where the, he's, the, the you know, owner's just doing enough to satisfy all the, all the um, yeah. requirements, but this has been dragging on for years, and they're very frustrated by it. So maybe if you could just generally walk through the process in, 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 a, in a general timeline of how you know when a sure. complaint comes in, how it flows up to you, and then your process, the court process. Sure, I'll bring up Frank to talk about the legal thing. He can sure. come up and explain that. But to, to answer your question on Wedgemere, uh, that individual got a building permit. Uh, under law, he has so many months or a year to execute that building permit. That's where we are now. Yeah. We have a problem there. Uh, but Frank can go into that a little more because uh, this has been in court. Again, just the general yeah. uh, walk through the whole process, the general timeline, if you could. The uh Generally, it depends on, on the cases. We spoke, Council, about the uh, the housing receiverships. Uh, generally, those cases uh, run 120 days from the inception, from, from the day we first file uh, a pleading in court. Most of these are in Malden District Court. Uh, we have about 120 days under that court order to finish the work. Uh, then there may be some... Uh, additional uh, periods of time, 30 or 60 days, where we either try to get the lien repaid or we actually have to uh, foreclose on the receivership. Uh, the other types of complaints that we have that we're dealing with mostly are illegal uh, basement apartments, illegal attic apartments, work without necessary permits, or various illegal rooming houses. Uh, when those complaints get to the, the legal end, they've already exhausted uh, either in special services, uh, uh, Mr. Simonelli has a, a timetable downstairs that he's put in place uh, to try to expedite the new cases. Uh, Board of Health does the same thing. But when they get to us, we'll file the complaint in district court. There's a return day. We ask for what's called a short 
order of notice, meaning usually you have 20 days to answer. Uh, we shorten that period of time with the court's permission. So the people are ordered to come to court within seven days or ten days and, and respond to the city's complaints. We ask usually at that time for an order that they apply for permits within seven days and fix the problem within 14. Now, the problem we run into is, as Mr. Grasso said, sometimes there's an absentee owner that may even be out of the country or they don't care. Uh, so then we get into, that's where your timeline breaks down. Uh, we ha we've had to uh, hold people in contempt. Uh, we've had, in one particular case, two people sentenced to the House of Correction for 10 days uh, for not complying with the court's orders. So it depends uh, on the other side's compliance once they get uh, the various court orders. Most of those cases should run about four to six months. Uh, there are some that are open longer, uh, and, and those are problems either with locating the correct person to serve the paperwork on, or there's difficulty tracking down the bank because with all the different uh, uh, consolidations and, and takeovers of certain institutions, it's hard tracking down the right parties. But, but for the most part, we try to close these things out legally within four to six months, which is, which is pretty expeditious. A typical civil case can take about a year, a year and a half to two years in the courts. Okay, great. I think that's helpful for um, people to know. Yeah, and, and I think that, that uh, you know, people who have a complaint, I, I know Ron's spoke, they should call either the mayor's office or ISD at 397-7033. Uh, Diane's always downstairs to take someone's complaint. If that's that's a phone number, I think everyone should, should have handy. Sure. Can, now, can you speak to the other departments, or would there be any objection if I asked inspectional service, just, just to give us real briefly a... Kind of the timeline on how that runs. Do you have any objections to the committee? No. Okay. No problem, Council. Okay. Is there? A, uh, yeah. If you could, if you could just um, let us know, kind of when I call down there, how it works, because like I said, we, we've got a couple properties that are really frustrating to a lot of the neighbors. How long it takes, and I just want them to hear from other sources of how long this thing can can flow. Well, typically, I mean, just a point of information, if I may, Mr. President, just on the previous question. With Wedge Mayor Roy, I just wanted to clarify that, that the individual there had no permit. He was actually chipping away at some leads, trying to subdivide the property. We got a report uh, from a constituent, and then inspectional services went down there, found the individual had no permit. Uh, there were some other problems with his property, his house dwelling, trying to move it uh, so he could subdivide the land. And he was denied on that process, too. Right. So the individual never had a permit at all on that one, just so we clarify that. Yeah, it's not, I, that, he, it's but not if, that he had a permit yeah. and it ran out. He never had a permit at all. Yeah. He doesn't have one now. He's denied. He okay. does not have a permit at all now. Okay. So we, if I call you yep. um, and I give you a property, can you just walk us through very yep, briefly absolutely. About no what, what the process is and how quickly, you know, how quickly you can get it and then I can get it or you can refer it up to the, the task force? Yep. Typically what happens is when we get a complaint, they can either leave their name or it can be anonymous or we get a tip from the councilors, which, like we do, or the fire department comes in from, like uh, Ronnie Grasso said, a vast uh, variety of, of people that bring in this information. What we do typically is we have a form. We fill it out best that we can, uh, give a description of the property, what the complaint is, and then what we do is we send out a form letter, which is a 48-hour notice, uh, and it also talk, talks about the rules and regulations and the CMRs and all those things. And then they have 48 hours to respond to us. We, if they don't respond to us within 48 hours, then what we do then is we send them another secondary notice, which pretty much says the same thing. It says, tells them that it's a second notice, and we give them another 48-hour notice. So typically that's four days. We wait one, and then we set it up to legal. So usually the process should take five days if the individual in that dwelling is uncooperative. So that's, we've actually been able to bring it a lot quicker than it has been in the past. Sometimes they used to sit around for a couple of weeks, maybe sometimes a couple of months. Uh, in the beginning when we were down there, there were some cases that were there for a couple of years. Okay. So now what we do is we try and stay on top of it, and we monitor these uh, form letters uh, on a daily basis to make sure uh, we know when these, when these uh, form letters are to go out. And then we stay right on top of them. So we do the due process correctly, and then we send it right up to legal. Okay, great. That Thank you. I, I think that's very helpful to help walk through the whole process for people. I appreciate it. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, just w one, one other question, if, if you don't mind. It's because we're on the, I'm on the efficiency committee. We're looking at things. When the house is foreclosed, um, what's the process there? Is, uh, what, what is, so the city takes over the building. Uh, it's foreclosed. What is what is that? What are those then, funds? Then we'll advertise on paper that a foreclosure sale will be coming up, 
and then we have the foreclosure sale. People will be at an auction just like a regular bank foreclosure. Okay. And this wipes out all previous debts, and we're in first position, so we get paid first. So okay. I would be there, uh, counselor, and say if I have 100000 into the job, I'll bid 100000 uh, If there are no other bids, I would get the property lien free for $100,000. What we just did, we sold it to a, uh, we had one house on Broadway, uh, Malden. This house came up, we had the auction. Some people tried to steal it, and our cost was like 160000 The highest bid we could get was 150. so I said, I'm, I'm buying it back. I just sold it to a nonprofit uh, group that will be occupying, putting two Section 8 tenants in there. Okay. Families, family housing. Okay. So that's how it works. Okay, and those are the, the costs that you've incurred to oh, sure. bring it up oh, to sure. it's all things like that? The court, the court has to approve all our expenses because basically we're working for the court to repair this property. Okay. And we have to submit costs and everything to them. Okay. And the judge, I mean, the judges go over this with a keen eye. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Kinnon. Uh, yes, Mr. Grasso, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody in the Inspectional Service and the Housing Task Force for um, many of the good things you've done in my ward. I would ask this, this question. On uh, last year, there were 221 cases. Is that correct? Yes. How many were closed? Um, foreclosed? No, how many were closed, those cases? 221 came on. How many were? Oh, basically, they were all closed. So we... I mean, they could be illegal units, rooming houses, sanitary code issues. They so, were all taken care of. So there were 221 that came in? Uh, yes. And all 221 were closed basically, out yeah, in the year? they were all closed, yeah. And the previous year, do you know how many that was? I, I, didn't, I didn't go that far back. Okay. But I, like I said, there's probably been in excess of 1,500 cases. Now, a case could be a single family, two family, three family house. Okay. Not units. And uh, another thing, I saw on here in one of them that uh, on Cherry Street, uh, it appeared uh, that somebody actually went to the House of Correction. Is that, could, could, could you comment on that? I'm familiar with the house. I would like to know a little if bit about that. I guess Frank it's Russell. public re yeah. record. The, uh, obviously, that's an extreme remedy counselor uh, but it was one that was appropriate we had a situation with an illegal uh, basement apartment uh, we had taken the case through the process uh, that I explained earlier there were several different court orders uh, uh, issued uh, uh, to the owners to remove the unit to apply for the permits uh, the banks were also ordered to do certain things and, and they did not step up to the plate and comply with the orders uh, ultimately uh, we, the city, filed a complaint for contempt against the uh, the two owners. Uh, a hearing was held last summer. Uh, a trial was held last summer, and uh, after hearing the evidence, uh, the courts, uh, at our request, uh, sentenced the uh, the two people to ten days in the house of correction. Uh, the the court did give them uh, ninety days before imposing the sentence to try to comply. Uh, they never did, and uh, uh, they were incarcerated for ten days. That's an extreme remedy. It doesn't solve the problem of compliance. As, as a matter of fact, uh, the dwelling unit still hasn't been removed. There's a hearing coming up uh, in the next week for uh, appointment of a receiver to actually step in and do the work. Obviously, I think for most folks, the threat of being incarcerated for a period of time, we would hope would get their attention. Uh, unfortunately, after these individuals were, were uh, uh, taken to the House of Correction, it was revealed that they may not be legal residents, and I'm not even sure if they're still in the country. So we're dealing with a lot of different problems with a lot of different people. Uh, these two individuals just simply didn't care. And, and so, so will we own that house? Is that one of the houses that, how will that work if they it's actually, it's not actually legal residents of the United legally States? Legally right now it's owned by the lender that held the mortgage. Uh, they have not done what we have expected them to do. And so, again, we're moving forward to uh, do the work ourselves. Uh, and, again, uh, part of the mayor's program is if we are appointed receiver and we do the work, we try to encourage owner occupancy when we go to sell these. So uh, there are certain things we're looking at now with, as Mr. Grasso mentioned, with the lead paint money, uh, that comes with affordable housing restrictions so that when we use money on these projects, we'll receive court approval. Uh, that means we have to sell it at the sale to an owner occupant. That's one of the things we're looking to do. 
uh, when we turn when we turn over one of these properties. So it's it's completely rehabbed. It's got all its permits up to date, and we're trying to gear these towards towards owner occupants. And for the most part, not all of them, but I'd say 85 percent of them have been turned over to owner occupants over the last 12 years. Okay. And one last question uh, on the house on Broadway. What was what was that address? 363. 363. Okay. And that, uh, Section 8. You, it's a nonprofit yeah. housing, and they're going to put a couple Section 8s in there. And did you work with the uh, ward councilor on that one before determining it should go to a nonprofit? Um, no, we didn't. Okay. What had I, happened on that? I would just request that uh, sure, in the sure. future uh, that the ward councilor, whoever that might be, uh, would be notified. Uh, and were those Section 8s already mauled in Section 8s? Hopefully they will be, yeah. Section 8s, as you know, are mobile. I understand that. Yeah. And we've, and we've got enough. Yeah. Well, so, okay. Okay, I don't want to say that. That's you. another issue. Councilor, just, I don't know if it's interesting, but you talked about the foreclosures. Uh, Mr. Grasso mentioned that there are three sales scheduled for April 28th. Um, and I'll be happy to give you the addresses. There's 17 Wilson Avenue. 396 Salem Street uh, and uh, 24 Grape Street. Uh, Grape Street's a three-family uh, dwelling. 396 Salem Street's a two-family dwelling. Wilson Avenue is a three-family dwelling. Uh, uh, notices will be advertised in the Malden News, so if there are people who are listening or watching, th these these are available to anyone to come and bid, uh, and they're, frankly, a pretty good deal. Uh, are they sold on the street? Is that... They're you? sold on the street. Uh, the terms are, are usually $5,000 uh, certified check to bid, and, and the balance is due within 30 days. Hey, and one, one last thing, please, uh, for attorney. Just could you repeat how long it takes in the court system? Because I don't. Oftentimes, the city gets blamed for how long it takes to get things done. But I know uh, you gentlemen doing a fine job in getting it into the court system. Uh, somebody ought to straighten out the court system from well, my standpoint. So, thank I, you. I'll say this, uh, uh, Councillor, that uh, as Ron says, it is a team effort. Uh, we've got everyone. We couldn't do it without the help of the building inspectors, plumbing, wiring, fire department, and everybody else. Uh, the courthouse staff, uh, uh, Judge Johnson, who's the presiding judge, uh, the other judges that staff Malden District Court and the clerks, are, are very aware of this city's uh, housing issues, that, that the administration and the city council take this very seriously. And they have uh, accommodated us with special sessions, special hearings, in an effort to expedite this. Uh, Malden Court is the second busiest district court in Middlesex County. It's operating about 80 uh, Now I can talk to you from my Bar Association president hat, uh, uh, and, and it is... Uh, as the state goes into to funding, uh, this is a, a busy urban courthouse. They're doing the best they can for us, and I, we, we're very happy with what we're getting in Malden Court. Uh, we're getting very favorable decisions. We're getting uh, cooperation. I can't How long is it? Pardon me? How long does it take, did you say, one to two years if the, it goes to the regular process? No, it, on a typical civil case, it will, but on these housing cases, the majority of these are closed out in six months from the time the complaint's filed. Right. The but vast majority. But if it's a typical civil, it goes one to two years. A typical civil case could go one to two years, so we're closing these out faster. Right. It's not a perfect system, uh, you know, because it's property. People have to get noticed. They have due process issues. That can drag things down when we can't locate an owner. But for the most part, I, I can say, with, without having put together a study, but we could do it, I would say of the cases that go to court, uh, a good 80% of these are closed out within six months. Mm, I agree. Yeah, thank you. And I, and I commend you for that. I just think that, you know, if you're the person living next door, six months is a lifetime. Council, that's why when we take these properties, we put our sign up, and usually the contract is in there within s several days to start banging away or yep. doing what he, what he has to do. Any other questions? Uh, I have a point of information. Huh. Uh, just as a point of information for the uh, councilors, uh, we mentioned 24 Alpine Street, and that has been ongoing now for a couple of years anyway, right? What right. Was, uh, that's the one that's at the Department that's, of Justice. That's the one. So sometimes you run into a real stickler. The, the, the people fight your tooth and nail, and sometimes uh, it takes longer. So we ask the public's patience for that, I guess. Yeah, that's the grandfather. Everything's, yeah, everything's being done that can be done. There, there is a, um, 
We're still waiting on that case. For Frank, you might just speak in the mic, please. I, I, no, Thank no, you. Th thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we're still waiting on that, and I, I know you have a lot of constituents interested. Uh, that and another case, we're, we've been waiting for a decision from the Massachusetts Appeals Court uh, for about seven or eight months now on the fire protection issues. Okay. Uh, we've been successful uh, at every level so far, and, and again, this is, as Councilor Cannon says, this is where the process can drag out because until we get that guidance, there's very little we can do uh, without it. And so uh, we're doing everything on our end. But we, know what, we know what you and, and the mayor's office expect of us. We know that. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor, Councilor Conyer. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, fortunately, we've been pretty successful in Ward 2. Uh, I'm sure Frank will remember when he walked in on Pleasant Street and found 26 people living in the basement. It took a while to get rid of them, but we did do it. Uh, unfortunately, some of our constituents uh, um, don't realize, because they may have a bad neighbor, uh, Housing Task Force, 99% of their uh, businesses deteriorate and deteriorating properties, you know, code violations, illegal apartments, renting as a rooming house, uh, abandoned property, and just sanitary code violations uh, will come to you. I think that pretty much covers uh, the housing task force. Unfortunately, you can't make a bad neighbor into a good neighbor. No. That's not your function, I don't believe. No. It's... Uh, People need to understand that it takes calls to the police department and a uh, uh, paper trail to uh, go after these individuals. So, uh, you know, I think it's important to note, you know, that what the housing task force was designed for, and that's to upgrade our housing stock in our community. Do you have any comment on that, Ron? Well, yes, you're, you're positively right, Councillor. We've had some nuisance properties. Uh, we've had a couple of drug houses um, that we assisted the police. Um, tips came in to us, and uh, we have a police officer on the task force. Again, the cooperation with different departments. There's a, there's a police officer assigned to the task force. His name is George McKay. So when we get these problem houses or nuisance houses that are doing drugs or prostitution, uh, I would ask George to run police reports. That's why it's important, as Council Condon said, a paper trail. Because when, when we get these police reports, and you can see there's been various problems with this property, now the police will take it, they'll put a watch on it, and usually uh, they end up doing, uh, they're arresting people. So we have gotten rid of several uh, homes in Malden that, uh, besides the housing issues, nuisance property. Also, they'll go into the property, and if they spot an illegal uh, rooming house, they'll do the report up so you can follow it up, correct? Positively. That's yeah. the cooperation. Fire department, the same thing. This is when someone asked about how do we get this information. Police calls, uh, uh, fire calls, they report this back to the task force. That's why this task force is made up of about 26 individuals, department heads, police, fire, Board of Health, uh, and it's a team effort. It's, a, it's definitely a team effort, and it works so well. I mean, basically, as a city council, the only thing you can do is call, if you feel like the, the deteriorating property, call inspectional services, send them down, make sure they're following code. They're your first point of contact. Like if it's a Board of Health issue, um, code issue, or inspectional service issue. And then they would go and investigate before we get involved. Like I said, we are the end, where we're going to end up probably taking these people to court or whatever. We're the last step. The first step has to be initiated through your own inspectional services or your co uh, Board of Health or Code Department. And then they bring the problems that they can't really handle to us because these problems would take too much of their time, and they don't have the ability and the legal people to go to court, which the task force does. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Uh, any other lights? I know Council Bucci does want to have a closing statement. 
no lights, but before I turn it over to Council Bucci, I'll be brief, and I don't want to repeat what the rest of the Council said, but uh, I have called upon the Housing Task Force a couple times, uh, and both times have uh, yielded good results. But I also think, uh, I, I think all the Councils touched upon it, but I just have a question for Mr. Grasso as far as, what happens if somebody wanted to report now, they might not know what the violation is yet, but I report something unanimously. Is there a way that instead of calling on the phone and leaving a voicemail, so you have to call back or an email address? Uh, most people will not leave a message. Uh, okay. They will not give their name. If it has some legitimate, like someone would say, uh, there's a nuisance property over here, uh, we would go and investigate. The basic thing I can do is just investigate. Uh, not everybody's going to let you in the house, but if we, we go to this structure and we see, like, broken porches or handrails or things like that, this allows us to start snooping for these people. Sometimes we'll go out, and the property looks pristine. There's not too much I can do, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But most people that give tips, they, don't, they do not leave their name, and they'll call back. So they don't, they don't have to leave their name. But we investigate, you know, if it come, especially if it comes through the councils or, or even the people out there. We, we do investigate. I think you obviously know how uh, grateful we, we are to have this body within the city, Mr. Grasso, and, and the, the colleagues that make up that body. But I think what we can do as a council, and I think everybody's agreed to that, is uh, somewhat beef up the ordinances in the beginning of the, pr the phase so that it doesn't yield to you. Because like you said, you're, you're a case of last resort. What we have to do as a council, and I believe there's a couple ordinances that are, that are already being drafted right now. I know one's coming through the Board of Health. Yes. I know there's one that I worked on where the banks have to notify the city that they are foreclosure and, and ordinances like that I think would make the street, city a little bit more palatable for the rest of the residents as well as give us the ability to, to kind of stop this before it gets to the housing task force. Not that we want to see you go out of business, but we'd like to see that portion of your business closed down because that means we're doing the right things here. And that would help, Council, because <laughs> this is a 24-7 job. I mean, I get calls uh, at home, Saturdays, Sundays. Uh, I get calls all the time. And the police will call me, fire will call me. But I said, you know, I'm only a phone call away. So the program is working. Uh, in conclusion, I would like to thank the Council for the opportunity to appear in front of you uh, and discuss the successful the success of this housing task force. And I know the mayor is, is completely satisfied with his endeavor, and he is providing a safe uh, areas for his residents. And I just want to thank everybody, and once again I say the task force will only be as successful as a team, right from inspectional services, Board of Health, Code, the Redevelopment Authority, it is a team effort. And I just want to thank you again for appearing. And if there's anything the task force can do for any of you, Come to your wards. You want to set up a ward uh, meeting? We'd be glad to do it. Council Bucci, thank you, Mr. Grasso. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. And, and again, I want to thank you for coming tonight. I know that you obviously had to pull together some information um, that you provided to us tonight as well. Um, that I, as I had reviewed it, uh, uh, Mr. Grasso, there are some questions I may have that I'll take offline regarding, you know, some of the costs associated, the repairs, and how those things actually operate. And in light of the fact that we had 221 um, cases, and that looks like uh, that projection could be uh, a lot more higher, depending based on our economical time. It's just a matter of knowing, you know, uh, uh, um, trying to get a grasp on is there always going to be a funding mechanism to make sure that we're doing this to, on the on the right side of things. So, I think offline, I'd like to chat with you a little bit more about that, but. Um, Back to a couple comments that I've listened to tonight. You know, I think Mr. Uh, uh, Council Christensen um, um, may have noted it earlier about some of the reporting um, information we're getting. If, again, possible, you know, I'd like to at least move up some, some of my thoughts or suggestions about being a little bit more. Although we get the report, um, Gary, I, I think sometimes I'm not quite, quite clear on what it's stating because it may be the same information we get a month later. But back to that timeline, we're not necessarily aware of where is it residing. So I work better from maybe a spreadsheet kind of format. But um, in terms of we were talking earlier about, you know, your meetings and trying to get a, a time and a date so that we can certainly partake in that. And back to um, Councilor Kinnon's um, um, inquiry about a particular piece of property and not necessarily knowing the end result of that. So I think that does become more my responsibility or our responsibility because we have this information. But if we can create even our dialogue with you folks a little bit more frequently, 
and I think we, we and I certainly know that we all want to. So again, thank you for tonight. Um, you know, again, thank you for our legal representation. And I know that again, we we spoke and have acknowledged that there is a multi-departmental approach to this success, and we certainly do appro uh, certainly appreciate all of the departments involved in making making Malden a place to raise your family. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Grasso. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Thank you, Mr. Dugan. Thank you, Council Bucci. Next order, business. Be hereby ordained by the Malden City Council that Section 7.9 of the Revised Ordinances of 1991 as amended be further amended by striking out Section 7.9.5 and inserting a new one regarding nighttime noise and disturbing the peace at residential properties. Councilors Kinnan, Christensen, Anderson, Nestor, and DePietro. On Councilor uh, Kinnan's motion to spend docker rules. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Rules are suspended on Councilor Kinnan's motion to enroll. Clerk will call the roll. Councilor Neil Anderson. Yes. Paul Anderson. Bucci. Yes. Christensen. Yes. Condon. Yes. DePietro. Yes. Kinnan. Yes. Lucy. Yes. Nesta. Yes. Spadafora. Yes. On Councilor Kinnan's motion to suspend rules for the purpose of ordaining. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? On Councilor Kenna's motion to ordain, clerk will call the roll. Councilor Neil Anderson, yes. Paul Anderson, Bucci, yes. Christensen, yes. Condon, yes. DePietro, yes. Kinnan, yes. Lucy, yes. Nestor, yes. Spadafora. Yes. Next order of business. Be hereby ordained that the revised ordinances of 1991 as amended be further amended Excuse regarding... Me, Madam Clerk. Council Condon. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. For the benefit of the public, you know, I'd like to ask the Chairman to uh, just briefly go over how this nuisance ordinance affects them in their neighborhood so they understand it. I mean, they don't understand what we just did, but maybe you can explain it to them. Council Kinnan. Council Kinnan. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Condon. Uh, what was what was just passed here was a revision to an ordinance which uh, was for nuisance and disturbance of the peace uh, out there in the community. Uh, there was an ordinance, uh, but it had no teeth to it, essentially, or no mechanism uh, so that it would uh, actually affect uh, the property owners uh, who had properties throughout the city uh, that were disturbing the peace on a frequent basis. Uh, this is really, uh, to your point earlier, Councillor Condon, uh, the task force is the last place we go. This should be indeed the first place so that if a resident has uh, somebody who's living nearby who between the hours of 11 p.m and 7 a.m. is consistently uh, disturbing their quiet enjoyment of their property or their neighbor's property. Uh, they can indeed call the police. That would be the first place to go uh, and make a uh, complaint that they are uh, being disturbed in the middle of the night, uh, whether it be by loud parties, uh, loud, uh, loud music, coming from a house with the windows open, that type of thing. Uh, and uh, what this will allow for is the police to go to the properties, ascertain whether indeed uh, there, is, uh, there is indeed a disturbance of the peace going on, to issue a warning the first time. The next time that they have to come back, uh, the police would then issue... Uh, write the report up, uh, a computer download will go between the police department on a monthly basis uh, to the treasurer's office. And the property owner would then be billed $100 on the first offense uh, for that disturbance of the peace after that initial warning. The second time, the property owner, who didn't take care of uh, rectifying the problem, would then be billed $200. 
on the third and subsequent offenses, uh, the property owner, uh, had they not come forward to the city and asked for help, if they were having a tenant issue, that type of thing, and did not work with the city in rectifying the problem, would be billed $300 for each event thereafter. Uh, the idea is not in any way, shape, or form uh, to raise revenue for the city. This is strictly in order to uh, have the property owners, and typically we find in many of these nuisance uh, properties that Mr. Grasso was talking about t uh, tonight, that they're often non-owner occupied. And this is uh, really a third prong in the attack uh, versus those who are non-owner occupied who have chosen uh, to be absent not just as an owner, uh, but absent in terms of taking care of their property and making sure their tenants uh, live in a manner, uh, uh, indeed, that is uh, neighborly. And, uh, and we have very few of these throughout the city, uh, but if you live near one, you know it and it can be a nightmare. Uh, we believe that this, uh, rather than going after uh, the tenants, which is very difficult, you could hand them a ticket, if they don't pay it, there's no teeth. We will be handing the ticket and the fine uh, to the property owner and expect them to take care of the problem at their property. If they so choose to then ignore this, ultimately we will lien the house and hand it over to the housing task force uh, to, in the worst case scenario, take the house. Uh, but we think it will get uh, very quick attention because if you continue to get, uh, pile up uh, $300 fines uh, because you're not dealing with your tenants effectively, uh, you will wake up pretty quick. So that, that's really what it's all about. Thank you. And the police department will keep a record of this so that uh, if the uh, owner of the property doesn't do anything about the so-called uh, bad tenant, then we could go after them through the police department records. Say it's uh, just say it's uh, somebody uh, that has a certificate from the housing authority. We could go after them through the with the help of the police department and contact uh, either the Greater Boston uh, Not Sure Housing or the Malden Housing Authority. Correct. Yeah. Uh, well, once it once it gets to the level where the fine isn't paid and it's turned over to the housing task force, uh, at that point, uh, this partnership that uh, Mr. Grasso talked about would absolutely go into effect. Uh, the police department today captures this information uh, within their cars. They all have computers now. Uh, so the, when the report is written up, it goes into the computer immediately. Uh, again, rather than giving a ticket to a tenant who may just throw the ticket out, uh, there will be a, uh, a feed that will go to the treasurer's office and ultimately a bill will go out, uh, you know, to the owner of the property. So, yes, uh, to answer your question, uh, we will be able uh, to go to other entities if it rises to that level. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Neil Anderson. Yes, thank you, Mr. President, uh, and thank you, Councilor Condon, for raising the question to the sponsor. I think it does make great sense that people at home uh, get a chance to hear what it is that we've just passed and have an understanding. I was very happy to be on the committee uh, that uh, that discussed this, and, and to Councilor Kinnan for his initiation of the of the project. I say thank you to you, Councilor. Um, we all know, particularly the ward counselors of neighborhood locations, that are consistently problems, and um, and and for for us to be able to go at after the people that are going to be financially affected by this, that is the owner of the property, for us to be able to get the owner's attention, that's what's going to make the change. You know, um, I, I can re recall as I've walked the neighborhood and knocked on doors and you hear, hear a, a particular 
residents say, you know, that house across the street there has always been a problem house for us. No matter who the tenants are that happen to live there, whether they're the people that are here now or the people that lived there two years ago, it's been a, a repetitive problem house. And, and so getting the attention of the landlord, getting the attention of the landlord through, a, through this financial mechanism uh, allows us then to, to, uh, to get some response, the response that we need. And uh, so I think for our residents in the city, we're going to see some real improvement as a result of this ordinance. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing that happen as well. So happy to be involved in, in making this change. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council, and thank you, Council Conan, for allowing uh, Council Ken to uh, explain that in further detail. And also, I'd like to thank the members of the Ordinance Committee. I was uh, lucky enough to sit in that ordinance meeting, and there was a, a large document uh, that Council Ken produced in the police department, which showed habitual problems in the same houses. He broke it down by wards, and it was not what Council Kinnan alluded to. It's not a revenue generator. It's not to go after the one-time graduation parties in the summer, but it's, it's a way to make the neighborhoods quieter, a bit safer, and more importantly, to recapture some of that cost that the mall and the police and the various local enforcement has to go back and forth to the same houses time and time again and using our resources, not only gasoline and cars, but manpower. Uh, and it's a way to again, make those neighborhoods uh, safer and quieter in an efficient manner. So I want to thank them personally uh, to have uh, a great ordinance that come, that's always been there but reinforced now. It's a little bit more palatable for the rest of the community. Thank you. Next order of business. We are hereby ordained that the revised ordinances of 1991 is amended be further amended by modifying the salary schedule in Section 8.38, Unclassified Employees. Councilor Kinnan. On Council of Kinney's motion to suspend docket rules, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Rules are suspended. On Council of Kinney's motion to enroll, clerk will call the roll. Councilor Neil Anderson? Yes. Paul Anderson? Yes. Bucci? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Condon? Yes. DePietro? Yes. Kinnan? Yes. Lucy? Yes. Nestor? Yes. Spetafora? Yes. On Council of Kinney's motion to suspend rules for the purpose of ordaining? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Rules are suspended. On Council Kinney's motion to ordain, clerk will call the roll. Councilor Neil Anderson? Yes. Paul Anderson? Yes. Bucci? Christensen? Yes. Condon? Yes. DePietro? Yes. Kinnan? Yes. Lucy? Yes. Nastra? Yes. Spadafara? Yes. Next order of business. Under suspension of docket rules, resolved that it is the sense of the City Council that the Traffic Commission designate Mason Street as resident parking only. Councilor Condon. On, Con on, excuse me, on Council Condon's motion to suspend docket rules, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Rules are suspended. Councilor Condon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. There's a problem with uh, T Park is parking down on uh, Mason Street, which is close proximity to the T. Um, right off of Child Street, so I would request that this go to traffic. Any questions for the councillor? On Councillor Condon's motion to pass, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Next order of business. Under suspension and docket rules, resolved that it is the sense of City Council that the City reestablish the Malden Resident Employment Monitoring Committee. Councillors DePedro, Christensen, Condon, Nestor, Furlong, Kinnan, Anderson, Lucy, Paul Anderson and Spadafora. I see you, everybody there. On Councilor Paul DePietro's motion to suspend docket rules, all those in favor? All those against? Rules are suspended. Councilor DePietro for the paper. Thank you, uh, Council President. Uh, as we embark on the uh, $77 million renovation and rehab of Malden High School, I'm glad all my uh, fellow uh, colleagues uh, signed on to this paper. It, uh, the intent is to hire as many uh, Malden qualified residents as possible to, uh, to work on this project. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, the ordinance was in, a, in effect uh, for the uh, schools to begin with, uh, the new schools that were built, and the intent is to uh, put as many residents as we can. The, the committee uh, will be established, and 
the mechanisms for uh, hiring uh, Malden residents would uh, will be uh, uh, advertised, and uh, it's only right because uh, the Malden residents are uh, uh, paying 10% uh, of this project. 90% uh, of it is reimbursed by the state, uh, but that's $7.7 million, and it's only right that the uh, uh, Malden tradespeople uh, take uh, advantage of this employment if they so desire. So. Thank you uh, to my colleagues for the uh, support. Thank you, Council. Any questions for the sponsor? Okay, Council Kenny. Excuse me, Council Nesta. Thank you, Mr. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to echo, echo uh, Councilor Petro's uh, sentiments here. Uh, this is a committee that laid dormant for a while, uh, and we're just trying to get it up and running because, uh, as we know, jobs are hard to come by, and if there are some, uh, we'd like to have. Uh, Malden residents get the preferential treatment here. So I uh, thank everybody for uh, helping push this through. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. And I also want to uh, thank Councillor Nestor and Councillor DePietro for spearheading this movement. Uh, the way the body has been established or is established already is something we're only, again, reestablishing. There's five members of that committee. Two are appointed by, excuse me, two are appointed by the council. Three are appointed by the mayor's office. So if, it, if there's no objection, we will do the same procedures we do for the other bodies, which would be we'll ask for anybody who has any indications of interest to either write an email or call the city council office to submit a resume. They will go through the normal procedures like we do with any other board, and then it will be up to the council to, to appoint two of those residents, and then the mayor has the ability to appoint three. So if there's no objection to that, uh, I would ask... Um, that you contact Sheila Fermato, the clerk, at 781-397-7130. Again, that number is 781-397-7130 if you have any interest. Or you can email citycouncil.org. What is it? Okay. Okay. Oh, City of Council at City of Malden dot org. I'm sorry, I'm so used to writing it down. So, City City Council at City of Malden dot org with your resume and any indication of interest within two weeks. Any objections? Councillor Kinnan. Uh, no, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say that I am fully in support of this, as I am uh, for residency, uh, for department heads, and any place where we can indeed take care of our own, we should do that. Uh, so I uh, just wanted to get that out, uh, and in the future when we take up residency, we'll remember uh, how important it was today. Thank you. So that sounds like a motion. So on Councilor Kinnan's motion to pass, all those in favor? Aye, aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Next order of business. Under suspension, it's all the rules ordered that the sum of $395,869 be transferred from free cash to various departmental accounts. Councilor Lucy. On Councilor Lucy's motion to suspend docket rules, all those in favor? Aye. aye. All those opposed? Council Lucy. I could just refer this to the committee, Finance Committee. On Council Lucy's motion to refer to Finance Committee, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion is referred to Finance. Next order of business. The Standing Committee on Finance, Thomas, referred paper number 118, series of 2009, having considered the same, make the following report. Establish, uh, ordered that the city establish a pay as you throw enterprise fund under the provisions of Chapter 44, Section 53F and a half, said enterprise fund to take effect July 1, 2009. Committee recommends that this paper be reported out without recommendation. Councilor Lucy for the committee. On Council Lucy's motion to receive the committee report, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Council Lucy for the committee. Thank you, Mr. President. We have so many um, papers that come out of committee. There are six to zero, five to zero, four to zero. This one actually uh, was three to three, so it came out as no, uh, no recommendation. But I thought it was important that we take it up anyways in the full body of the council to vote on it just so that we can give a direction to the comptroller, uh, Mr. Fermano. Uh, the funds will be coming in. They need to place the funds in, in, in an account. The enterprise uh, account would be set up for purpose just for trash expenses and tra money taken in for the, tra the page you throw program. Um, again, it was uh, a 3-3 three -three vote in the committee, but it is out on the floor now for uh, ju uh, just discussion. Thank you. I am sure there will be some 
Questions for the council for finance? Is there any questions for the finance chair? You have a motion to? What's your motion? You have a motion? Adopt. On council, Lucy's motion to adopt. Clerk will call the roll. Councilor Neil Anderson. Yes. Paul Anderson. Bucci. Yes. Christensen. No. Condon. Yes. DePietro. Yes. Kinnon. Yes. Lucy. Yes. Nesta. Yes. Spatafora. Yes. Motion is adopted. Motion is adopted. Next order of business. Council Condon. Move that Thank you. On Councilor Connor's motion to move for reconsideration, hoping that the that the, same the, same will, the same will not prevail. So a yes vote will mean we'll open it back, we'll up, open it back up, and no vote will not. Finalize open, we'll finalize the vote tonight. Everybody hear that? Yep. A yes vote will reopen it, and no vote will finalize it this evening. Open the side. Correct. Clerk will call the roll. If you'd like. Clerk will call the roll. Neil Anderson. No. Paul Anderson. No. Bucci. No. Christensen. Yes. Condon. No. DePietro. No. Kinnon. Yes. Lucy. No. Nesta. No. Spatafora. No. So reconsideration is denied. Recon reconsideration is denied. Who was that vote, Madam Clerk? Who was the vote? Seven. It's seven to two. Eight to, four. Eight to two. Eight to two. Eight. Two to eight. Two to eight. Next order of business. Council doesn't object. We're going to read all the finance papers at once. The Standing Committee on Finance, Thomas Referred Papers Number 109, 110, 111, 112, 114. And 115 series of 2009, having considered the same, make the following report. Order that $52,766 be transferred from community policing to police department overtime. That $35,000 be transferred from free cash to police department gasoline. That $50,000 be transferred from free cash to fire department medical. The 12000 be transferred from free cash to fire department gas and light. The 4000 be transferred from human resources training to human resources overtime. And that $6,199.63 be transferred from McFadden Manor wearing apparel to McFadden Manor overtime. Committee recommends that these papers be reported out favorably. Councilor Lucy for the committee. And Councilor Lucy's motion to receive the committee report. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Council Lucy for the committee. Thank you, Mr. President. All these, these uh, papers were discussed in finance. There was one minor change on the... Uh, oh, you didn't... Okay, I got ahead of myself. Okay, all those six papers were voted unanimously in uh, finance. I, I would urge the council to pass. Thank you. Any questions for the finance chair? Seeing none and hearing none, on Council Lu Lucy's motion to adopt, clerk will call the roll. Councilor Neil Anderson. Yes. Paul Anderson. Bucci. Yes. Christensen. Yes. Condon. Yes. DePietro. Yes. Kinnon. Yes. Lucy. Yes. Nestor. Yes. Spatafora. Yes. Next order of business. The Standing Committee on Finance, term was referred to paper number 113, series of 2009, having considered the same, make the following report. Order that the sum of $87,000 be transferred from free cash to fire department overtime. Committee recommends that this paper be amended to transfer the sum of $54,000 
and be reported out favorably with the amendment. Councilor Lucy for the committee. On Councilor Lucy's motion to receive the committee report, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Council Lucy for the committee. Thank you, Mr. President. This, this is the one I got a, a little ahead of myself with. Uh, this was the one that was changed in committee. Originally, it came in at 87000 to be transferred. It was reduced to 54000 Again, the, it's coming towards the end of the year. The free cash is, is uh, coming down, too. So it was just something that we thought for now the 54000 will get the fight department by. Thank you. Any questions for the Chairman of Finance? Seeing none, seeing no lights on Council Lucy's uh, motion to adopt. Clerk will... He has to amend it first. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to amend it. On Council Lucy's motion to uh, amend in accordance with the committee report. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? On Council Lucy's motion to adopt, clerk will call the roll. Councilor Neil Anderson. Yes. Paul Anderson. Yes. Bucci. Yes. Christensen. Yes. Condon. Yes. DePietro. Yes. Kinnan. Yes. Lucy. Yes. Nestor. Yes. Spadafora. Yes. Next order of business. The Standing Committee on Ordinance Consumers Report Book Number 46, Series of 2009, having considered the same, make the following report that the revised ordinances of 1991 be further amended regarding Section 10.12 parking restrictions on private ways and unaccepted streets. Committee recommends that this paper be reported out favorably. Council Kinnan for the committee. On Council Kinnan's motion to receive the committee report, all those in favor? All those opposed? Council Kinnan for the committee. I just want to move move the paper, but I think Council Bucci may want to talk about this because she brought it into committee. Thank you, Council Kinnan. Council Bucci. Um, If I, if I understand um, what I requested, um, Councilor Kinnan, was a little bit of clarification around the ordinance language. Um, we have a, well, there's been a couple of these streets that have popped up up over in Ward 8, um, Barker Road, Loomis Street. There's some different issues regarding private way and public way. So I think what I'm appreciative of is the uh, resident that brought forth this issue that actually Jack Coakley was very instrumental and helpful with me in terms of trying to define what needed to be done as well as Karen. Um, so I do appreciate it on behalf of the residents. But it was really to try to clarify, you know, um, changes that in, in regards to, um, if I, and again, I'm still trying to best understand public versus uh, private, but, you know, in some areas where law enforcement or other folks aren't aware of the fact that there has been some changes so that would allow them to um, enact and enforce the requirements that, you know, that, that residents are supposed to um, be managed by. And in this case, there was some confusion about that regarding the Barker Road um, area. So I do appreciate the language change to readdress it. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Kinnan, you want to follow up? And if I may, I believe the the, the reason was because of some issues we had with verbiage or technicality right. on unrestricted ways that the traffic department would not enforce the parking right. restrictions that are enforced on private ways and obviously on public ways. Uh, so we basically went in and amended the ordinance to now receive that or accept that that un unrestricted way unrestricted streets rather excuse me now have the ability to be enforced by the city of Marlins traffic ordinances. Correct. Correct? So if that's a little vacation for everybody. On Councilor Kinnan's motion to enroll, clerk will call the roll. Councilor Neil Anderson. Yes. Paul Anderson. Bucci. Christensen. Yes. Condon. DePietro. Yes. Kinnan. Yes. Lucy. Yes. Nastra. Yes. Spadafora. Yes. On Councilor Kinnan's motion to suspend rules for the purpose of ordaining, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those in f opposed? On Council Kinnan's motion to adopt, clerk will call the roll. Ordain. Uh, excuse me. On Council Kinnan's motion to ordain, clerk will call the roll. Councilor Neil Anderson, yes. Paul <coughs> Anderson, Bucci, yes. Christensen, yes. Condon, yes. DePietro, yes. Kinnan, yes. Lucy, Nestor, yes. Spadafora. Yes. Motion is ordained. Next order of business.
Standing Committee on Ordinance, to whom was referred paper number 74, series of 2009, having considered the same, make the following report. Ordered that the city rescind its acceptance of section 1 of chapter 456 of the Acts of 1998. Committee recommends that this paper be reported out favorably. Councilor Kinnan for the committee. On Council Kinnan's motion to receive the re committee report, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Council Kinnan for the committee. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is to rescind uh, the acceptance of the uh, library trustees as being eligible for the uh, pensions that was put in place by the Council in 1998. Uh, there's been uh, much talk about it uh, in the local newspapers and in the uh, Boston Globe and whatnot, uh, but it is... Uh, after we do this, will be effectively rescinded so that uh, library trustees no longer uh, will be eligible, if indeed they ever were eligible, uh, for uh, pension consideration. That's it. Do we have any questions for the chairman of the committee? If I may, this is something that I, I want to thank again the Ordinance Committee. Uh, I know there's a lot of public questions and comments and concerns, not only from the public as well, but also some of the committee members here, the council members, um, did have some questions, and it was referred to ordinance. They took it up. They voted four to nothing. We found it to be something that we didn't feel was acceptable in this day and age, and they now we have the ability to rescind that. But to be very specific, that does not affect the past at this point. The individual that was in question in the articles, that pension, as of right now, is not affected by this ordinance change. It's only going forward. Correct, Mr. Chairman? Just for the public certification? Uh, for the public certification, yes, that does not. Uh, what we are doing here uh, does not uh, change what has happened in the past. Uh, however, uh, in, the, uh, in our investigation of uh, what const how this happened, uh, what was going on, we did discover that the library is a 501c3 uh, corporation, uh, which then does call into question whether or not uh, the vote which took place in 90, 1998 uh, does indeed cover uh, a 501c3, which is technically not part of the city of Malden. So uh, there will be more uh, to that, uh, but that really at this point is in with the uh, retirement board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions? Councilor Christensen. Yeah, just also for the uh, council's edification, the other thing that um, the committee is looking at is um, something we found in the city charter, which states under uh, the act to incorporate the Malden Public Library, no member of the board of trustees shall receive compensation for his services. So whether or not that has any validity to it, uh, the committee really is trying to uh, do some background and understand how this happened and you know where we're going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Council Christensen. Any questions for the councilors? Hearing none and seeing none. On Councilor Kinnan's motion to adopt, clerk will call the roll. Councilor Anderson? Yes. Paul Anderson? Yes. Bucci? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Condon? Yes. DePietro? Yes. Kinnan? Yes. Lucy? Yes. Nestor? Yes. Spadafora? Yes. Motion is adopted. Next order of business. Yep. If it's no objection to the to the council, once again we're going to read all the point of information, council. Yeah, I'm sorry. This might be through you to the chairman. Are you ordain ordaining that paper tonight? <coughs> didn't need to be ordained. It was in order. It's in order. You want to speak, Madam Clerk? Thank you. It's in order. Okay. You got it. You all set, Council? Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Council. The Standing Committee on License to whom was referred papers number 108, 107, 105A and B, 69S, 106A and B, series of 2009, and 409DD of 2008, having considered the same, make the following report. Application for extended hours permit, Harvard Market, 229 Highland Ave, amusement machines, DAV, 85 Willow Street, taxi driver licenses, 
and Class II renewals. The committee recommends that these licenses be granted. Councilor Anderson for the committee. On Councilor Neil Anderson's motion to receive the committee report, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Councilor Anderson for the committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as you know, we look at all of these applications that come before us, uh, whether they're renewals or in the case of uh, new applicants, and, and we make some judgments about whether or not those uh, applicants are worthy of being um, appointed for a second time or approved for a second time. And in this case, uh, we have reviewed all of these applications and, appro and uh, recommend approval of them all, and I would urge the Council to approve as recommended by the Committee. Council. Anderson, do you mind? I know that seems like a motion. Would you mind if Councilor Condon discuss? Thank you. Councilor Condon. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, Chairman of our license. On 229 Highland Avenue, uh, they're asking for extended hours. What might those hours be? They'd like to open at 5.30 in the morning rather than 6. It's renewal of last year's um, same hours. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions for the Chairman of License? And, and just uh, for edification, you know, when we are reviewing these licenses, we're, we're looking to see if the individual ward counselor has issues with them, if there are reports that come from our compliance, and if there are tax issues and that sort of thing. And, and uh, in, in, in these cases, uh, we all approve and assume that the rest of the, the body looks forward to approving to renew all these licenses. Do you want to say council? Oh, yeah. Yep. On council, Neil in his motion to grant. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Licenses are granted. Next order of business. The standing committee on license to, was, to whom was referred by number 3F, series of 2009. Having considered the same, make the following report. Application for tax driver license. Committee recommends that this license be denied. Councilor Anderson for the committee. Move to receive the committee report. On Council Anderson's motion to receive the committee report. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Council Anderson for the committee. Yeah, in, in, in like fashion, when we find applicants that, uh, that for whatever reason of the their background or history and so forth are not worthy of uh, uh, of being approved. We also request denial of that license, and this is one of those cases. Thank so you. I would urge the uh, the the council to uh, approve the recommendation to deny. Any questions for the chairman of license? Hearing none and seeing none, on council and Neil Innes's motion to deny. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? License is denied. Docket is clear. Docket is clear. The docket is clear. I will move from my left to right for personal privilege. Any lights? Councilor Condon. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to take this opportunity uh, to recognize Mary Sullivan Kelly, who uh, has sat through this meeting, probably uh, going to be chasing a few of you people down. <laughs> she worked so tirelessly for the uh, Friends of the Malden Public Library, so she certainly deserves to be recognized. Thank you for your hard work, Mayor. I wonder what Councilor's ward she lives in. On the right-hand side, any lights? Long resident. Councilor Bucci. Um, thank you, Mr. President. First, I also want to apologize to my colleagues for my lapse of um, memory and activity there for a moment on that ordinance um, that my colleague, um, uh, Councilor Kinnan, asked me to speak to because I actually did that for a moment, just lapse out. Thing. I asked Paul, what the heck am I doing? But So I, I thank you for the indulgence, and I apologize. Um, two quick points. One is to uh, thank the folks down in Linden. We met last night. You may have heard me speak of it briefly earlier tonight, but about 60 people came out, had a great conversation, certainly was very um, interactive. Also want to send my appreciation to the Mall Police Department, specifically um, Officer McKay, uh, based on a couple of my other counselors from Ward 4 and Ward 1, their recommendation was to have him in for a neighborhood crime watch, and the discussion went beyond that. We are obviously heard tonight it was about housing and other issues, and we've developed a little bit of an action plan with um, a lot of um, resident engagement, so that was a very positive night. 
The other um, piece I just want to mention, you folks may have heard about it or read about it. Um, we have actually received an e-government award for the City of Malden regarding the website improvement. And I know that even through the um, media blitz and, and, and notice, uh, lot, attention was given to the community, um, Citizens Engagement Committee. Um, but I think it neglected to also note that there were other counselors involved in the development of our website prior to the CEC becoming designed. Um, Councilor uh, Spadafora, uh, Christensen, I don't want to obviously offend anyone, um, but if you were involved prior to some of the changes being made um, or recommendations outside the CEC, you should certainly have that recognition. But, you know, again, we're working steadfastly, still focused on making some additional improvements, um, and we'll have some good news and activities to speak about in terms of uh, a new website. But I do want to make sure that folks hear about it, know about it. It's, you know, it's, it's an award that's given to us by Common Cause, which is really uh, a division, uh, group in the uh, state really promoting um, um, government and transparency. And, and that certainly has been the champion of others um, that have been sitting here for the last couple of years. So it's in play, and it's another good piece of news for Malden. Thank you. Any other lights? Seeing none and hearing none. If I may br briefly, I want to, excuse me. Oh, Council Nest, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, just like to wish uh, John Webster, the Director of Veteran Services, who fell ill this weekend, a uh, speedy recovery. I want to thank the Mystic Valley Charter School Key Club. They were out and about in Ward 4, um, getting rid of some uh, graffiti throughout the Ward for us. Uh, they're a huge help to us every time they go out. And uh, also a good friend of mine, Kevin O'Malley, he's a lieutenant, um, just came back from, uh, I believe, a year in Iraq, so I just want to uh, thank him for his service. He's a fellow MC grad, great guy, good friend of mine. Just uh, welcome him home and thank him for his service. Thank you, Council Kinnon. Excuse me, Council Nestor. If I may, I just want to remind the public that April 6th through November 27th, Monday through Friday, the weekly pickup for yard waste will begin. Uh, it will be weekly from in the months of April and May, and you know, every other week in June, July, August, and September, and then weekly again in October and November. So I'll just repeat that again. Starting April 6th uh, through November 27th, Monday through Friday, every week in April and May, and then every other week in June, July, August, September, and then weekly in October and November, Yard Waste. And it's also available on the website. I just want to let everybody know that because everybody's getting out there doing their spring cleaning. The city is also starting uh, their street sweeping. So for those out there who's waiting for that, well, they are getting, I think, the major streets right now. But officially, it's going to kick off, I believe, in two weeks. And that's it. And the winter parking ban ends tomorrow, everybody. So the spring is here. No other questions or other comments on Councilor Christensen's motion to adjourn. All those in favor? All those opposed, committee, council is adjourned. <laughs>